Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. We are at chapter 5 and we will be looking at the sample questions on chapter 5 today. We have already been through all the content and the topics of chapter 5 that's test management and uh, we will try to understand that what type of questions can be asked to you by looking at the sample questions from the chapter 5. So we have around eight questions to be asked from this chapter. So you need to prepare accordingly that you will be securing eight marks from here out of 40 in the examination. So let's look at the very first question of this chapter that uh, we have on the screen right now. Which of the following best describes how tasks are divided between the test manager and the tester? So if you remember the topic which we were talking about in one of the tutorials that the tasks of the test manager and the task of a tester, this is how they can ask you with collaborating both the options put together and then trying to create a, a diversion so that you get confused and then you have to pick something wrong but it's just that you know it the both the options uh, about the test manager and the tester will be separated by a comma here so read the options carefully before you can really pick the right answer so the very first option a the test manager uh, plans testing activities and choose the standard to be followed while the tester chooses the tool and control to be used so we know from the learnings that uh, the selection of the tool and the test control is also a part of the test manager so a is not the right option because we do not have any of the tasks relevant to tester in the option a when you look at option b the test manager plans organizes and controls the testing activities while the tester specifies and executes the test cases as of now we have the most relevant option as b the reason is uh, it obviously the tester gets involved with the specification and or that is writing the test cases and executing the test where the manager takes care of planning organizing and controlling so anyways we have got the right answer but still look at the other options to be sure about the right answer the c says the test manager plans monitors and control the testing activities while the tester design tests and decides about the appro approval of the test objects. Remember team, testers do not have any rights of approving, deciding, determining, selecting, identifying or any such things. So here it says approval, obviously tester cannot approve anything. D, the test manager plans and organizes the testing and specifies the test cases. Now that's the part which goes irrelevant. The test manager does not specify the test cases while the tester prioritizes and executes the test cases. No. So the first part of the test manager itself is wrong. So right now we have the most relevant answer as B in this scenario and this is how you deal with it. So just elaborate those options, try to explore it, get the right answer and pen it down. The next question is about the product risk. So the, most of the recent uh, tutorial we were talking about the risk uh, and uh, we had two different types of risk like that is project risk and product risk. So uh, we have got options like low quality of requirements, design code and test. That's one of the project risk, political problems and delays in specially complex areas in the product. Uh, that's a diversion when they use the word product at the end of the option does not mean it is related to product But if you see political problems delays in complex areas the delays are basically related to project So B is also a project risk whereas C error prone areas Potential harm to the user poor product characteristics are collectively put together as product risk because these are the things which will harm an end user and obviously can be considered as one of the risk areas post release so c is your product risk but let's look at d problems in defining the right requirement potential failure areas in the software or system now problems in defining the right requirement is again goes to the project risk so the right answer is c here which is straightforward from the product risk the next one is about the exit criteria we have got uh, which of the following are typical exit criteria from testing so we know about the exit criteria from chapter one from chapter five both of them we have discussed a lot about it and most of us should not go wrong here at least look at a test coverage measures yes reliability measures yes the cost remaining with you the schedule state of defect correction and the residual risk Yes, absolutely fine. We have all these entities as a part of the exit criteria. 
when you look at B, the test coverage measures, reliability measures, degree of tester independence is uh, basically an entry criteria. When you talk about the independence to be measured or considered, you will consider them while entering the process, not while exiting the process. Looking at C, the test coverage measures, reliability measures, test cost, availability of the testable code is an entry criteria. Obviously, uh, to enter the process or enter the testing, any particular level as well, availability of the testable code would be one of the entry criteria, not the exit criteria. Looking at D, a time to market, okay, exit criteria, residual defects, the tester qualification and degree of tester independence makes it entry criteria, not exit criteria. So finally, we are remaining with one option, which is again straightforward. If you remember the points we discussed in entry and exit criteria of the test process, you can very well understand the right answer is A. Let's look at the next one. Here we are talking about the benefits of independent testing. So we learned about the degree of independence. We had six independent degrees where we also learned about the benefits of independence and drawbacks of independence. So this question is related to benefit where we have A as more work gets done because tester do not disturb the developers all the time. Now, when it is independent, obviously testers do disturb the developers for reporting and getting the defects fixed. B, independent testers tend to be unbiased and find different defects than the developer. Yes, that's one of the benefit of having a different testing team compared to the one who is developing. C, independent testers do not need extra education and training. Of course, they need because they are self-independent or self-dependent. They would need their own skills and understanding about the testing methodologies to be applied at that point of time. When you see D, independent test to reduce the bottleneck, no, that's one of the drawback basically. Yes, they are sometimes considered as bottleneck for the delays in the process by obviously having a lot of defects and getting them fixed. So the right answer for the benefit of independence is B, where independent testers are considered as unbiased and obviously they help find different defects than the developers. The next one is the uh, which of the following is a project risk. Uh, we have again a straightforward thing here. The A itself is the right answer because skill and staff shortage is one of the project constraints. Whereas when you look at B, poor software characteristics, that's product risk. Failure prone software delivered, it is product risk. And D, possibly reliability defect, uh, that's again uh, product risk. So the right answer is A and other three are basically your product risk. So that's again straightforward if we have understood uh, what exactly the project and product risk are. The next question is on the test summary report. So the question goes here, like as a test manager, you are asked to write a test summary report concerning the test activities and according to some standard. Really remember, remember that the standards is not a part of the syllabus. So this, this, this is just a diversion created so that you start thinking about the standards, not the question. So skip those things which are not related to your syllabus or not you know, discussed uh, in the tutorials because it will help you to uh, avoid those diversions and move to the wrong answer. What should be the most important information to be included as a part of your report? So you just have to concentrate here, not being a test manager, not about the standard. You just have to remember about the test summary report that what the test summary report must include. So the test summary report basically includes all the major activities conducted towards achieving the goals of the testing. And here we have the B as the right answer, an overview of the major testing activities, events, and the status with respect to meeting goals. But when you look at A, the number of test cases executed, no, that's test execution report. C, or overall evaluation of each development work item, anyways, First of all, if it is development work item, we are not talking about it because it is test summary report. So nothing to do with that. D, training taken by members, that could be a prerequisite or an entry criteria, but not a test summary report. That's obviously to improvise your team, but not included as a part of test summary report. So we have the most relevant option as B, uh, that is the, obviously the major activities conducted towards achieving the uh, set of goals defined for the testing. Moving to the next one and typically the last question in this tutorial that you are a tester in a safety critical software development project during execution of a test 
you find out that one of your test case has failed, causing you to write an incident report. According to the IEEE standard 829, what should you consider to be the most important information to include in your incident report? So this question is just about what information must be included as a part of incident report. Not about like safety critical softwares, not about the standard again. It's just that they're trying to concentrate on the incident report, but creating a lot of diversion for you to you know concentrate on something else and go wrong. So having more patience, more keen, more observation about the right question or to the point is very important to answer this uh, examination. Other than that, everything is else fine. You just have to take care of such tricks. So here the right answer, we will look at it. We have got A here, impact, which means the severity. Incident description, obviously the summary is important. The date when it was identified or reported, which will help you to find out the lag time or also to measure that how long it has been on hold. And your name seems to be casual. That why would, you, why would I mention my name as a part of it? That's not important, no. It is important if you look at the same term from a professional manner that is detected by or reported by. Who was that tester who reported this defect? Because for any further clarification from different stakeholders, all I would need is your name. So it is just the way ISTQB puts it in a casual way just to create a diversion. But obviously the reported by name is very important. So A seems to be right as of now. Let's look at B, unique ID, which is important special requirements needed and the person who caused the defect obviously uh, that's not at all mentioned in any of the defect report that who was the person who caused the defect rather it can be root cause analysis or the module which was the main cause of it but not the person because we do not discriminate people and we have learned in this session so b is not relevant c transmitted items your name and you're feeling about the possible root cause of the defect, which goes a bit casual, but not relevant to the question at all. And anyways, from the ISTQB syllabus, this is not one of the details field. The incident description, development environment, and expected result of testing. So generally, if you get diverted with your name in option A, then you would go with D because you will not see that it is development environment in option D. Generally, people do not see such things during the examination that environment is important, but which environment? Is it the test environment or the development environment? So keep an eye on such things. D is having development environment, which has nothing to do with the defect report. It can be the test environment, not the development one. So finally, the right answer is A, which makes it clear and more open that the right answer would be the most important thing which we can consider as a part of the incident reports. So no matter you get the right answer, you need to just make sure that the why the other options are not correct and justify yourself that, okay, fine, this is what we can make the most to prove that our option is confidently right. So that's all from here now to chapter five. We have eight questions all together and we have taken around seven questions on the understanding basis. So we'll be looking at something more beyond this. So you can always uh, feel free to comment below to ask me any kind of questions about this or feel free to any kind of feedback suggestions about the tutorials so that I can make it better for other people as well. So stay tuned for upcoming tutorials. We'll be having the last chapter to come up, the chapter six with, uh, you know, we'll be having three topics there to cover. And finally, we'll be done with the curriculum. So stay tuned for our new videos and updates. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and uh, Till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.